it's a function of the pace of change and the pace of urbanization that you both had this amazing militarization and growth of military power and proletarianization, growth of working class power. The Kaiser would have demonstrations for his birthday. The Social Democratic Party would have demonstrations for the 1st of May, and they're about the same size. It was not at all surprising that anybody who lived in Germany would find this the most dynamic, the most robust, and the most terrifying nation in the world. One man who sensed the storm clouds gathering over pre-war Germany was a 28-year-old painter, Ludwig Meidner. As the Kaiser threatened war, and workers threatened revolution. Meidner lived and worked in a Berlin attic, painting at night by gaslight. From his brush came disturbing visions of an approaching apocalypse. It was a time unlike any other in the brooding metropolis of Berlin. I was very poor, but not unhappy. I had made a home for myself in a cheap studio with an iron bedstead and a number of boxes that served as tables. Food was a minor matter, but canvas seemed the most valuable thing there was. I was in love with it. And I was not ashamed to kiss it with trembling lips before painting those ominous landscapes. I did not paint from life, but what my imagination bid me to paint. I felt like a hound racing along in a wild chase, mile after mile, to find his master. A finished oil painting filled with apocalyptic ruin. I feared those visions. Meidner was not alone in his visions of doom. Artists, musicians and writers across Europe had a sense that a great cataclysm was at hand, and many welcomed it. There's a fever and there's a feeling everything had to come to an end. I mean, Duchamp said, you know, we need the great enema in Europe. And if, it, if it's going to be war, then if we need war, we need war. But we need a great enema. But they're actually seeing it in social terms. Meidner, he was like everybody else, he was reading Zarathustra at that point. And there is a famous text in Zarathustra where Nietzsche produces the idea that the cities literally, they are the melting pot of the modern humanity, and they literally have to almost explode for this revolution to happen. Meidner's visions of the apocalypse were prophetic. Germany was about to explode, not in social revolution, but in war. Some damn foolish thing in the Balkans, Bismarck once predicted, would ignite a major war. In 1914, just as in 1912 and 1875, tensions were running high in the troubled region. Thousands of ethnic Slavs, ruled by Austria-Hungary, remained determined to break away. The tiny kingdom of Serbia was the center of Slavic resistance. Many in the country were eager to expand it into a kingdom of greater Serbia. One such patriot was Gavrilo Princip. Princip had been rejected by the Serb army for being too small. Wherever I went, people took me for a weakling, even though I was not. Princip finally found acceptance in a secret Serbian society the Black Hand. On June 28th, 1914, the heir to the Austrian throne, Archduke Franz Ferdinand, paid an official visit to the city of Sarajevo. Waiting for him were the assassins of the Black Hand. 
At 11 a.m., a wrong turn by the Archduke's driver brought the heir to the Austrian throne face to face with Gavrilo Princip. At that moment, I was filled with a strange feeling and I aimed at the Archduke from the pavement. I fired twice, perhaps more. Within minutes, both the Archduke and his wife were dead. Austria and its emperor, Franz Joseph, wanted to punish Serbia. To his ally, the Kaiser, he cabled, their policy of uniting all southern Slavs under the Serbian flag encourages such crimes. Serbia must be eliminated as a political factor in the Balkans. Despite the dangers, the Kaiser and his military staff pledged Austria their full support. Appearing strong in the moment of crisis is what they must do, and it's what pushes them over the brink when they come to brinksmanship in the July crisis of 1914. It's as if it's a test of character rather than a test of national interest. My view is that the balance of evidence shows that Germany wanted a small war with some nasty treatment of Serbia, increased power for Austria-Hungary and nothing else. But this was an, an act of madness because they couldn't stop it. No one could. The alliance system had long ago set a deadly trap. Now it would be sprung. On July 28, 1914, Austria declared war against Serbia. But war between Austria and Serbia meant war between Austria and Russia. That meant war between Russia and Germany. And that meant war between Germany and France. And that meant war between Germany and Britain. In a flash, the whole continent was going to be at war.